Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So today we are going to see the second video on the Java series. Why Java is called platform independent, right? So let us quickly see this topic today without wasting our time. Okay. Now, what is platform independent? So first of all, as you can understand from the word itself, platform independent that means irrespective of whichever platform it is the java code will run on that platform right so you can see in the uh, on the slide whether it's a linux machine it's an mac os machine or it's a windows right they can run you can run your code on any machine right that machine should have jvm okay so now let's let's look this concept from how this jvm is working okay now i have created a simple uh, conversation kind of a thing so you can understand this topic right i or you write a program right so people who are watching this video you can understand that you want to write a program right so you want to create a java file so java file you can understand that a file in which the java program would be there right but you will be writing in the English language, right? So now I'm speaking in the English language, you will be writing something like public static void mid. So those will be English language phrases would be in English sentences, right? Now JVM comes to you, okay? So understand like this is a interaction happening between you and JVM, right? So JVM will say, I cannot understand your English language, right? Similarly, as we are saying to the robots, we cannot understand your language, right? So, JVM will tell, I am only understanding bytecode, right? Now, what you will do is you have a source code written, okay? Now, compiler comes into the picture, right? So, imagine there are two people talking, you and JVM. You both are stuck with your own problem statements. You tell, no, English is the best language. JVM tells, no, I am only understanding bytecode. So, bytecode is the best language. So, now compiler comes into the picture. It will compile your source code and create a byte code from the source code, right? So compiler does a, a handshaking job between you and JVM, right? So compiler will tell, I'll help you guys out, uh, stop fighting with each other, right? So this is how the JVM, uh, this works. So compiler, that is Java C. So remember this Java C, okay? It is used to compile the program. How you will remember it? It is very uh, simple. So how you will compile any program in Java? So Java C, Java that comes automatically in Java and C is the short form of compiler. So Java C you will use to compile any program in Java. It is used to convert your code to the byte code. Why it is converting to byte code? Because JVM understands only byte code, right? And again, JVM will be exec will be able to execute once it gets the main method. So main method also we will understand in the next video. Okay. Now behind the scenes, let's revisit what happens. Okay. Whenever you or me write a program, it is written in Java, right? The Java C compiles it. Okay. The result of Java compiler is the dot class file, or you can say the byte code. And it is not the machine native code, right? Unlike C compile compiler. Now byte code which is generated is a non-executable code and it needs an inter interpreter, right? Someone needs to understand, right? For example, uh, you go to US, but you know, you don't know their language, their English language. So you, you would need some interpreter in between, right? So here also, we need an interpreter to execute on a machine. This interpreter is the JVM and thus the byte code is executed by the JVM. And finally, the program will run to give the desired output, right? So this was about how JVM will work, right? Okay. And it's a platform independent, right? Because uh, you cannot see, apart from iOS, you can run your code, right? So JVM need to be built for particular OS, right? So Java is platform independent, but for JVM again, you would need, it is dependent on platform, right? So JVM, can understand only bytecode, right? So that's why you call Java is platform independent. This is the answer. This is the explanation of why Java is called platform independent, right? 
So uh, that's it for this video. And please do like, share and subscribe our channel. Please do like this video and put positive comments. And if you have any feedback, so put it positively. We'll try to incorporate in the next particular uh, upcoming video, right? Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit the like button, right? Stay tuned for more updates. Thank you.